Alright, hello YouTube, this is Equal Square here with Lesson 4 of Lua Tutorials. Still the same day. Um, today we're going to be expanding upon our logic script that we have created here. Uh, may mostly because there are some things that I have, um, uh, that there are some thing, more things to be said about this that can make it more versatile if you will and also there's a few things I forgot to explain okay one of the things I forgot to explain in like lesson two right here where you see it says print you entered blah 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 dot dot input what this dot dot does like what does this do that's what you might be asking yourself well what this does this is the concatenate uh, statement I guess you could say what this does is it takes the string on the left hand side of it and the string on the right hand side of it and merges them together as if they were one so that's how that works in case you didn't know um, I'm sorry I did not explain that earlier but uh, well it is explained now um, and some more things uh, I have explained all of these logical operators you can use on these but there are more things you can do with your um, if statements such as uh, maybe you want to only let this happen if more than one statement is true so let's say and and then you can put something here um, local uh, number nil um print enter a number i don't know why you would want to do this but just number equals io dot read um i believe there's a special function somehow for making sure it's a number but whatever um we're not going to worry about it and now let's just say and number equals actually you know we could do two number io dot read and that will give and that will give it a number by default so and if number equals let's say five then we're going to do dun 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 today um, and then we can do something like an else if to do to make another check. Uh, what this does it means if this is f if this overall equates to false, then we're going to go to this else statement. But since it's an else if, <clears throat> it means it wants to do some logic too. <clears throat> so we can do input is equal to Zelda then and always be sure you make put a then after logic else it doesn't work <clears throat> and then we'll just put something like master sword bro why would we put that I don't know then we're going to wait not why not waits uh, one and then else and we'll still do blah 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 normal stuff so now if I go in here and I click it into something Z Zelda enter a number five da 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 today into something Zelda four master sword bro enter something H Y enter a number five you entered high <laughs> you know basic stuff like that um there's also or which means if this is true or if this is true uh oh screwed up if this right here is true or if this is true if either one of these is true or if both of them are true basically as long as one of these is true then it'll do this um you can also put more than one of these on a line uh if you want to equate certain values before another one, like let's say you got four or statements, or and statements, and and ors statements, you should say, and you want to equate them in a certain order, you can use parentheses. 
to determine which ones go first. Um, uh, also, there is not, which basic it not. It's basically the same thing as if I was to put and number does not equal five. I, th I believe it's basically that same thing. Um, I'm pretty sure it's about the same thing as that. So there's and or not. I believe that's all of those. Um, yeah. So that's how those work. Uh, I've explained um, these things, these extra things. And I've explained the concatenation thing in my Jenga. Now, what I wanted to get to in this lesson was I don't forget. Um, hmm. What was I going to get to in this lesson? Hang on a second. I'll be right back when I remember. Right. I remember what I was going to do now. What I was going to do was something somewhat advanced. Um, it's not like completely advanced like a beginner should know it but it it can be over some people's heads if it's not explained very great and what we are talking about here is tables and I will try my best to explain them as best I can um I don't understand them 100% but I do understand a lot of them most of how they work so um, a table. What is a table, you may be asking yourself. Well, a table is sort of like an advanced variable. A table is like a variable that can hold variables inside of it. Um, I don't know if you've ever used another programming language like C++ or something like that, and you've made arrays, and how like an array is just like multiple of the same variable in one variable type thing well a table can hold lots of different types of variables in it like we can create one table and put strings in it and integers in it and things like that and it can be expand as we need it so how do we make this magical beast you may be asking yourself well simple we do something like we give the t we make a name for the table like um let's call this table we can't just call it table because that is a reserved word in Lua. So we can call it just um, R table. And then we do equals open close thingamajinga. Now, what does this do? <clears throat> you may be asking yourself. Um, this defines this as a table. Now, with this in our hands, we can do R table dot and then do variables. Like, um, we can make a integer and make it equal to three. And then we can do our table dot string, uh, string is equal to cool. And then our table dot, uh, uh, not sting, string, sorry about that, string. Um, and these... Keep in mind, these are variable names, not variable types. Um, which I actually saw the word for it today. It um, Coercion. That is the word for there being no variable types. It's all, like, dynamic and everything. Um, like, I could name this STRAM or something. Why would I do that? I have no idea. And it would still be a string. String and then a float is equal to... 2.5 I don't know um now what and then but here's another cool thing about tables we can put tables inside of tables dot table 2 is equal to a table and then we can use this r table dot table 2 dot and then variables inside of that and so on and so forth but here's where tables really come in handy. And this is for something called arrays. <clears throat> How do you use an array? Well, you basically take the R table, or whatever you named your table, open square bracket, close square bracket, and inside this you do the element. Um, it is common LUA convention 
for tables or for arrays to start at one. <clears throat> There is a zeroth element, but if you use that, your table arrays may not be compatible with um, some of the default libraries. So it's best to start them at one, because that's what the default libraries use, and you don't want it to be incompatible with itself. That's not something you want. Um, and so our table one. Um, and now, unlike other languages where you like define the table and say how many. Um, how many you uh like how many elements you want at compile time <clears throat> in in lua arrays are dynamically added like um dynamically expanded i should say meaning it adds more elements as you need them <clears throat> so we can do element one um is is equal to now um see this works <clears throat> like this works a lot the same as doing our table dot something you know um we we don't have to we're not restricted to just putting one variable type in these arrays but um let's say we got like um 20 of these things do 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 two and you may be asking yourself, well, um, Square, why do we just, why do we have eight array elements in just one variable? Why don't we just do something like var1, var2, var3, var4, var5, var6, var7, and var8, huh? Why don't we just do this and... Do like equals one, equals two, equals three, equals four, equals five, equals six, equals seven, and equals eight. Why, why can't we just do this? The answer is arrays are used a lot in for loops for like adding things, removing things, reading from like a file, which we'll get to later. And if we do a for loop for n equals zero to, let's say, uh, let's just say seven, that will be. Or let's just do one to eight because that's how many thingies we got. Eight do end, uh, not inged, but as you can see. This is accessed by an integer, not a name, which means we can do our table uh, in equals in. And what this will do is, well, let's just set these to like totally screwed up values randomly. Da 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 da. da. Don't do that. Boo doo doo. Boo doo. Now, what this will do is it'll access the nth element, aka uh, during the first time it'll access the first, then second, then third, then fourth, then fifth, so on and so forth, and it'll set it to the current n, like this. You can't do that if you just have this, because you there's no way to dynamically affect which variable you choose because it's just a single name whereas this has elements so keep that in mind um it's better in the long run and you can use it in for loops and stuff like that you can access it with variables if that makes any sense to you but now as you can see these are all out of whack so actually what i'm going to do though is because i don't want to have to deal with this enter crap i'm going to comment that part out and I'm going to down here type out um you know really let's just do print to string r table in now this should give us one two three four five six seven eight even though these are all set to weird things and there we have it one two three four five six seven eight so we can access arrays with for loops that's good right it is good. Um, now, one thing to note. Like I said, you can put tables inside of tables. Like, rtable.second. 
Now, keep this in mind. Each element does not have its own second. Instead, only the R table, an unindexed R table, has the second table. So if I try to do R table in dot second equals in, it's not gonna work because there's not like each each um element does not get its own second. Instead, if I want to access that, you have to drop the element and then do R table dot second. However, it is perfectly legal to give the second table arrays as well. So, you just can't access it like an array dot and then it. You it has to be unindexed. Like uh or it's not it's not the right word. Uh un you can't call like an element. I hope I'm explaining this all right. I'll say it one more time. Um these, you know, like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, these are elements. Each element, um, each element does not have its own table called second. Instead, just our table has second. Because, um, because, like, uh, well, I don't know why. Um, it can cause a lot of errors if you are not careful. Um, so this, now if I just change this back to in it should still work correctly it does um now that is tables and arrays and um stuff like that um i hope i made it all right for you to understand they they have a lot more uh in-depth stuff you can do with them but this is going to be it for this tutorial i can teach you that more in-depth stuff later um but until then i'll see you later and bye